Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of communicable diseases and in particular vaccination. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to tutorial 7 of 9 on vaccination. So, in our last lesson we had a look at specific and non-specific mechanisms of defence within our body and we also looked at the mechanisms by which phagocytes and lymphocytes work. So now we're going to take a look at vaccination and how this may prevent illness in an individual. So, first of all let's delve into the science behind vaccination. So, we have these cells called memory cells, which are produced during a specific immune response. And these memory cells are derived from a type of cell called a B cell, which is just a type of white blood cell. It's a lymphocyte. So these B lymphocytes, these B cells, they produce these memory cells, which then remain in the blood. They circulate in the blood for many, many years. And these memory cells are exactly as the name infers, so they have memory to a particular type of pathogen that, that was encountered by the body in the past. So if that same pathogen infects again, and if the same pathogen has the same antigen it infected with in the past, the memory cells in question can quickly produce antibodies. So this is why with some diseases such as chickenpox, once you get chickenpox as a child, usually, you don't usually get it again ever in life, even though you're exposed to the chickenpox pathogen multiple times throughout life. And it's because of these memory cells that are staying circulated in our blood after our primary exposure to the chickenpox pathogen. So let's just recap the um, mechanism behind which a lymphocyte may produce antibodies. So the lymphocyte we're going to be referring to here is the B cell, and this is the one you've got to be concerned with when it comes to vaccination. So this B cell, it's circulating in the blood, it encounters a pathogen. And when it encounters the pathogen, it's going to bind to a specific antigen on the pathogen surface. So an antigen is just a specific protein that is unique to this particular pathogen that the B cell binds to and it allows also for the identification of a foreign body within, within the human body, which is the, this pathogen that we've detected. And this then results after, in, in, in massive production of um, antibody, which then leads to elimination of the infection so at this point, we get elimination of the infection, and this is if the antibody B cell response is successful. But also, we get formation of these memory cells, which remain circulating in the blood. And these memory B cells, they keep the specific antibody that was made against the pathogen in question. It keeps these antibodies on the surface of the memory B cell, and these continue to circle through the blood in life. And initially, when the B cell detected the pathogen and produced the specific antibody, it would have actually divided to form these plasma cells, which are the cells that are responsible for producing the antibody in really large quantities. So that means upon this initial exposure to the pathogen, not only are you generating antibody to fight the pathogen then and there, um, which is being produced from these plasma cells, but also you're producing these memory B cells for the future so that when we are then exposed to the pathogen again, we can produce these antibodies even more quickly. So as I said, upon second infection, so upon second exposure to the pathogen, we're going to get these memory B cells 
which have the pathogen, which sorry, which have the antibody specific to that pathogen already on the surface, and these memory B cells, remember, are circulating in the blood, they're going to encounter this pathogen, and they're going to be able to produce, they're going to be able to divide into these plasma cells and produce these antibodies even more quickly than upon first infection. So this forms the basic science behind vaccination. And don't worry, we'll go over this again once more near the end of the tutorial so we can recap upon that then. So, what is a vaccination? Well, in order to induce this response to a pathogen, we're going to need to inject the pathogen into the body. But how do we do that without actually causing the disease to occur in the body? Well, what we do here is in a vaccination, we inject an inactivated form of the pathogen. So this might be a heat treated component of the pathogen and the, and the heat basically makes it inactive, but that component is still there. And so the antigen is still recognized by the body's immune system. Or perhaps it's a dead form of the pathogen. So the underlying theory of this is that the pathogen is inactive, so it's not gonna induce disease in the body. And this is crucial. So this inactive pathogen is going to activate an immune response. And remember, as we saw in the last few slides, this immune response is not only going to generate antibodies there and there from plasma cells, but it's also going to produce memory cells, which are then going to remain circulating in the blood. And remember that these pathogens are given with the same antigens that the actual pathogen has. So this pathogen that's, that's contained within the vaccination um, is going to contain the same ant antigens as the pure pathogen itself. Otherwise it would be useless, because then when we encounter the pure pathogen in real life, um, it, it, it's just not going to be helpful if it doesn't have the same antigen as the actual pathogen within the vaccination. So now let's have a look at the same memory B cell process that we saw before. But this time, instead of there being a first infection and then a second infection, there's going to be a vaccination and then exposure to the virus. So it's, it's, it's the same kind of thing, except here we're replacing the first infection with vaccination. So just to make it a bit clearer, let's have a closer look. So we're going to vaccinate the person. So we're going to introduce the inactive form of the pathogen into their body. The B cells themselves are going to detect this inactive pathogen here, so they might detect an antigen on the surface of the pathogen. The B cell binds to this antigen, so it binds to the pathogen, and this results in, remember, two scenarios. Number one, it results in formation of the plasma cells, so the B cell divides to form these plasma cells. And the plasma cells then produce our antibodies, which attack the pathogen there and then and eliminate the disease. So we've got our B cells forming our plasma cells here. This is option number one. Oops, a little colour change there. And the plasma cells themselves produce the antibodies, which are going to eliminate the disease. And option number two that occurs is production of these memory B cells, which keep the anti particular antibodies, the specific antibodies to this inactive pathogen on its surface. And these end up circulating in the blood. So they circulate in the blood. I'll show that as like a little arrow going around. And that's for life. Now, what happens upon second infection? So I'm referring to this as second infection, but what I really mean is second exposure to the pathogen, um, because this is our first exposure. So the vaccination is our first exposure. This is our second exposure. So we've been vaccinated, we're exposed to the same pathogen again. And well, we're already going to have these memory B cells mobilised in our blood. So in a similar way to the last scenario that I was explaining, we're going to be able to have a really rapid response where antibodies are produced in massive quantities really rapidly and they're going to destroy this pathogen. 
So, you can see that vaccinations basically mimic the first infection and therefore they allow the body to respond really, really quickly to a second infection, even though there actually hasn't been a previous first infection. Only a mimic of it, which is the vaccination itself. And actually evidence shows that vaccination allows the body to eliminate a live infection for the first time within seven days, which is really, really quick. And the peak of the immune response occurs within the first three days. So what I want you to gauge from this is that there's this whole process to how vaccines work, just going back to, to um, a few slides back, if I can get back there. So going back to these slides, you do need to work your way through this, perhaps draw this out, annotate it, because it's really important you understand how a vaccination works. But also remember that there are different types of vaccine, so just keep this in mind. And just to look at this graphically, so this is your primary immune response, which occurs upon vaccination. So if I were to say vaccination occurs here. So this is our primary immune response. We have a fairly slow increase in antibody concentration in the blood. And this then tails off as the, as the pathogen is eliminated from the body. Now, I can tell it's slow because look at the gradient of this rise compared to the gradient of this rise in the secondary immune response. Well, this occurs after second exposure. So this is after second exposure to the pathogen. And this is going to induce a much more rapid response. So look at how steep this curve is compared to how this is. Also, look at the level at which the antibody concentration is rising to up here. Look at how much more antibody is being produced in the secondary immune response compared to the primary. So these are the two factors that I want you to take in, in account in terms of vaccination. So remember, we have our vaccination at this point, we have our secondary exposure to the pathogen here, and overall we're getting this faster response and we're getting a bigger response. Look at the peak of that. And actually this diagram is something you could reproduce in the exam because instead of writing all of that, you could actually draw out this graph and annotate on it. So vaccination also introduces this concept of herd immunity. So as we vaccinate people, so as you can see here, we have our green people are vaccinated and our orange people are infected. So when, people, when more people are immunised, we're going to have less ways in which Infected people can spread the disease, so the immunised people act as a barrier against infection spread. And this is this concept of herd immunity, because we can't vaccinate everyone in the population, because some people may perhaps don't want to be vaccinated, or may not be well enough to be exposed to a pathogen and therefore can't medically be vaccinated, so this may include immunocompromised people or very young babies. And it's this concept of herd immunity that keeps them protected, even though they're not vaccinated against very dangerous diseases such as measles. So you can see here, if we don't vaccinate enough people in the population, there's going to be more people who are susceptible to getting infected. So here we've got only three people out of the five who are, who are vaccinated. And therefore there are these two routes of spread in which the disease can spread from person A to person B to person C and D, whereas here more people were vaccinated and therefore these routes are all blocked. So these mass, mass vaccination programmes contribute to herd immunity and essentially cause the virus to disappear because it's unable to pass from person to person. It gets stuck, it gets blocked by pe surrounding people who could potentially be carriers for the infection but are actually vaccinated so they can't. 
and we vaccinate against pe against diseases which a person has not encountered before and usually early in life because there's no point vaccinating someone near the end of their life because they would have been exposed to all the pathogens by the time they get to their to the, well not all the pathogens but a significant proportion of pathogens by the time they get to the end of their life so our goal is to vaccinate people near the start of their life which is why you can probably remember getting quite a few vaccines as a child compared to now. So second tip of the session, remember how vaccines work, go back to that diagram where we have our vaccination as our first exposure to the pathogen and then our second exposure and work your way through that. Again draw it out in your, in, in your own um, terms and annotate it in a way that you'll understand. And just remember that vaccines overall make sure that the immune response will be much, much greater the second time round. And you really need to focus on this aspect, that, that, that the immune response the second time round is much more rapid and it's much bigger. These are really, really key concepts that you need to draw from this tutorial. So well done for today. That was a really, really dense and detailed tutorial. So please do go back and listen to those slides in which we were analysing the diagrams on the, on the first exposure to infection and second exposure, because those are really important diagrams that I want you to really understand. So thank you very much and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.